Welcome to Research Hub. P-value are words often uttered by early career researchers and sometimes even by more experienced ones. The p-value is an important and frequently used concept in quantitative research. It can also be confusing and easily misused. In this video, we explain what is a p-value, how to calculate it, and its statistical significance. Let's begin. So dot first, what is a p-value? The p-value, or probability value, is the probability that your results occurred randomly given that the null hypothesis is true. P-values are used in hypothesis testing to find evidence that differences in values or groups exist. P-values are determined through the calculation of the test statistic for the test you are using and are based on the assumed or known probability distribution. For example, you are researching a new pain medicine that is designed to last longer than the current commonly prescribed drug, intended only to demonstrate the concepts, you know that the underlying probability distribution for both medicines is the normal distribution. You are planning a clinical trial for your drug. If your results show that the average length of time patients are pain-free is longer for the new drug than that for the standard medicine, how will you know that this is not just a random outcome? If this result falls within the green shaded area of the graph, you may have evidence that your drug has a longer effect. But how can we determine this scientifically? We do this through hypothesis testing. So, we show the p-value table. So, how can we interpret the p-value results of an experiment or trial? A p-value table, prepared prior to the experiment, can sometimes be helpful. This table lists possible p-values and their interpretations. Alright, next, how to report p-values in research. P-values, like all experimental outcomes, are usually reported in the results section, and sometimes in the abstract, of a research paper. Enough information also needs to be provided so that the readers can place the p-values into context. For example, the test statistic and effect size should also be included in the results. To enable readers to clearly understand your results, the significance threshold you used, the critical p-value should be reported in the methods section of your paper. For example, we might state that, in this study, the statistical threshold was set at p is equal to 0.05. The sample sizes and assumptions should also be discussed there as they will greatly impact the p-value. Okay, how one can use p-value to compare two different results of a hypothesis test? What if we conduct two experiments using the same null and alternative hypotheses? What if we conduct the same clinical trial twice with different drugs? Can we use the resulting p-values to compare them? Using p-values to compare two different results may be more feasible if the experiments are exactly the same and all other conditions are controlled except for the one being studied. However, so many different factors impact the p-value that it would be difficult to control them all. Okay, next, why just using p-values is not enough while interpreting two different variables. P-values can indicate whether or not the null hypothesis should be rejected, however, p-values alone are not enough to show the relative size differences between groups. Therefore, both the statistical significance and the effect size should be reported when discussing the results of a study. Okay, things to consider while using p-values, p-values are very useful tools for researchers. However, much care must be taken to avoid treating them as black and white indicators of a study's results or misusing them. Some are few other things to consider when using p-values. When using p-values in your research report, it's a good idea to pay attention to your target journal's guidelines on formatting. Typically, p-values are written without a leading zero. For example, write p equals 0 0.01 instead of p equals 0 0.01. Also, p-values, like all other variables, are usually italicized, and spaces are included on both sides of the equal sign. The significance threshold needs to be set prior to the experiment being conducted. 
Setting the significance level after looking at the data to ensure a positive result is considered unethical. P-values have nothing to say about the alternative hypothesis. If your results indicate that the null hypothesis should be rejected, it does not mean that you accept the alternative hypothesis. P-values never prove anything. All they can do is provide evidence to support rejecting or not rejecting the null hypothesis. Statistics are extremely non-committal. Non-significant is the opposite of significant. Never report that the results were insignificant. What does p-value of 0.05 mean? A p-value of 0.05 is a commonly used threshold in statistical hypothesis testing. It represents the level of significance, typically denoted as alpha, which is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. If the p-value is less than or equal to 0.05, it suggests that the observed results are statistically significant at the 5% level, meaning they are unlikely to occur by chance alone. What is the p-value significance of 0.15? The significance of a p-value depends on the chosen threshold, typically called the significance level or alpha. If the significance level is set at 0.05, a p-value of 0.15 would not be considered statistically significant. In this case, there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. However, it is important to note that significance levels can vary depending on the specific field or study design. Which p-value to use in t-test? When performing a t-test, the p-value obtained indicates the probability of observing the data if the null hypothesis is true. The appropriate p-value to use in a t-test is based on the chosen significance level, alpha. Generally, a p-value less than or equal to the alpha indicates statistical significance, supporting the rejection of the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Are p-values affected by sample size? Answer is yes, sample size can influence p-values. Larger sample sizes tend to yield more precise estimates and narrower confidence intervals. This increased precision can affect the p-value calculations, making it easier to detect smaller effects or subtle differences between groups or variables. This can potentially lead to smaller p-values, indicating statistical significance. However, it's important to note that sample size alone is not the sole determinant of statistical significance. Consider it along with other factors, such as effect size, variability, and chosen significance level, alpha, when determining the p-value. So, how to calculate p-values? The p-value that is determined from your results is based on the test statistic, which depends on the type of hypothesis test you are using. That is because the p-value is actually a probability, and its value. And calculation method depends on the underlying probability distribution. The p-value also depends in part on whether you are conducting a lower-tailed test, upper-tailed test, or two-tailed test. The actual p-value is calculated by integrating the probability distribution function to find the relevant areas under the curve using integral calculus. This process can be quite complicated. Fortunately, p-values are usually determined by using tables, which use the test statistic and degrees of freedom, or statistical software, such as SPSS, SAS, or R. Don't forget like share and subscribe my channel.